20 to 30 minute webinar, and I appreciate your attendance today, and we'll go ahead and get started. First, I'll start by telling you a little bit about Albers Communications Group. For more than 15 years, Albers Communications Group has been a trusted partner to all of our local and national clients. We specialize in public relations, digital marketing, and video production, and our sweet spot is integrated strategies where we take all three of our areas of expertise and develop an integrated, customized program for our clients. Our team is a team of experts who have built a reputation on our integrated strategies, effective storytelling, news media expertise. We've worked in all 50 states throughout the United States as well as internationally with the news media. And we offer scalable solutions for organizations of all types and sizes. So whether you're a one-person business or a multi-location business, we offer scalable solutions to meet your needs. Albers was founded in the year 2000, and we have more than 15 years of award-winning franchise experience, including the PRSA Silver Anvil Award, which we won in 2009 for a franchise-based program. Again, my name is Gina Pappas. I'm the president of Albers Communications Group. Feel free to follow me on Twitter or connect with me on LinkedIn. You can find me on Twitter at Gina Pappas or LinkedIn.com slash GC Pappas. And here's a look at what we're going to cover today. Oops. First, we'll go over local PR strategies. First, we'll go over corporate PR strategies. Then, we will go over local PR strategies. Excuse me. Then, we will talk about comprehensive strategies, incorporating digital marketing, and our franchise experience. So, first of all, why do franchises need public relations and digital marketing? First of all, this can be a great strategy when it comes to breaking through industry clutter. Uh, you may have a lot of competition in your industry, and not everyone may be doing public relations, or they may not be integrating it fully with their digital marketing strategy. So what we recommend is integrating the two as a way to differentiate yourself from the competition. It can also increase your name recognition. If you're in the news, if your locations are in the news, then people are going to start recognizing you in a different way than they may already. Also, it allows you to gain a competitive edge. Like I said, if your competition isn't integrating their public relations fully with their digital, then having a comprehensive program can really help set you apart. Public relations and digital marketing also allow you to be seen as industry experts. If you're on the local news or featured in the newspaper talking about your industry, and you're talking about it in a way that reinforces your expertise, people may be more inclined to come to you when they're making a purchase decision because they feel like you really know what you're talking about. Also, PR and digital marketing allows you to leverage the exposure provided by the news media. Nowadays, news isn't just offline. You don't just find it on the TV, and you don't just get it in your newspaper. Those stories most often are repurposed and used in the online space. So if you are able to get a story online and get them to link back to your website, you are leveraging the news media's reach, um, and they are backlinking to you, and that can be a very powerful tool to help you grow your business. Next I'm going to go into corporate PR strategies from a national PR, strat national PR standpoint. And what I mean by national PR is that this is PR that is executed on a national level and is mandated and developed and executed by the corporate office. There are three main strategies you can focus on from a corporate office standpoint if that's how you choose to go about your integrated program. First of all, there is consumer PR. There is vertical market PR, and there is lead generation PR, and I'm going to talk about each of these three in a little more detail. First of all, consumer PR. You are using consumer PR to speak directly to the consumer, directly to the person who is going to be the purchaser of your service or product. So what you do is you develop a strategy and you execute it to consumer-friendly media. Keep in mind your target audience. Keep in mind the people who you want to get in front of, and then choose news outlets that will reach those people whether they are online or offline. Your social strategy also comes into play here. Um, we have executed successful consumer PR programs for one of the nation's leading in-home cleaning services. And by doing this, we are reinforcing the expertise 
of the national brand, and we are able to stay in front of the audience in a way that's maybe different from the competition. And we're able to do it in a way that is newsworthy. You have to be careful when you're doing consumer PR that it's not too promotional. So our expertise is developing a newsworthy angle that we think the news media is going to pick up on so that we're doing it from a public relations standpoint and then integrating it back with the digital, which I'll go into more later. Next example of national PR is vertical or trade PR. This is when you're speaking directly to the vertical markets that can impact your business. So if you're a service company, who are your referral sources? Uh, we have successfully executed vertical trade PR programs for the nation's largest in-home senior care company. And what we do is develop strategies and, and news pieces that speak directly to referral sources. Perhaps it's uh, assisted living facilities, perhaps it's doctors or nurses, but we can execute strategies that will then be placed in the publications that they read from a business standpoint, and it can be a powerful tool to help form partnerships with your referral networks and introduce them to you and something that you can use when you're out networking and talking to them about how you can partner and how you can refer business back and forth to each other. The last national example I'm going to share with you is lead generation PR. This is PR that can really help you expand and expand your growth. Um, we were able to work with a private security company and help them uh, place a story in Kiplinger Business that directly led to the sale of three franchises. So developing a strategy that talks about a booming industry or an industry that's growing or a brand that's growing and pitching publications that are appropriate to your target audience can result in similar growth for you. So it's something to consider as your franchise network is growing. You want people to see it. You want to target Entrepreneur Magazine. You want people who are in your sweet spot in your target audience to see who you are, get a peak interest in your business, and contact you to learn more about how they might be involved in growing your franchise network. There are a few advantages to a national PR strategy. It's brand focused. When everything is controlled by the corporate office, it's easy to stay on brand and to really control the message from a corporate branding standpoint. It's also big exposure uh, to land a national spot on the Today Show or in the Wall Street Journal or in a publication like Kiplinger's is a big deal, and that exposure doesn't come every day. So it's a big opportunity to take your brand to the next level. On the flip side, there are some disadvantages to the national strategy. It's less personal for your individual locations. If you really want to establish your franchise owners as experts and help them grow their business and support what they're doing, national PR probably isn't the right strategy to consider. Also, you have challenges related to national media. It's a very cluttered market. It can be difficult to break into it. And once you have one national media story, it's harder to come by another one. They have a very long memory as far as national media and national journalists. So it's, you kind of get one shot at those big national outlets, and then that's probably all you're going to see for a while. With that said, it still is very effective and an off, often a route that corporate offices choose to go when it comes to PR strategies. The next corporate strategy I'm going to talk about is, in quotes, we call it PR in a box. And what this is, is PR that's developed with the help of an outside agency by the corporate office and passed along to franchise owners so that they can execute it on their own. So you're giving them all of the tools that they need. It may be a press release. It may be support materials. It may be corporate videos. It may be social content. But you're putting it into the hands of your individual locations to execute it. And from a corporate standpoint, you're, you're really just developing it and passing along. Um, there are a few advantages to this strategy as well. Uh, it allows your franchises to make local contacts. So if you give them the tools they need to be successful from a PR standpoint and they're able to do it and execute the program properly, it allows them to make valuable contacts with the news media, um, with potential customers by doing their own social. So it can really help them grow individually. It's also brand compliant because it's been developed by the corporate office, but it still has a more local feel because it's being pitched and marketed on a local level. 
Of course, there are disadvantages to this strategy too. Um, if you are relying on your busy franchisees and their marketers or their salespeople to execute this type of strategy, it is probably one of the things that is going to fall by the wayside when they get busy. So it can be inconsistently developed, um, and you lose a little bit of control by giving it to your franchisees um, and allowing them to make the contact. So again, an effective strategy if you have franchisees who are highly motivated and have the time or have a dedicated marketer who can focus on this. But PR and digital, we always say, are things that need to be done on a consistent basis in order to be successful. And oftentimes with a PR in a box strategy, we don't necessarily see that consistency. Now I'm going to move on to talking about local PR strategies. The first one is office to office. These are ideas that are generated and executed by the franchisee. They may or may not contract with an outside agency, and they are handled by their own sales or marketing person. So this is really leaving PR and digital to the devices of the individual locations and depending on them to develop the ideas and execute them themselves. There are advantages to this. Uh, certainly it allows franchisees and their people to more quickly respond to local breaking news and trends. If they develop a relationship with the news media by pushing out their own PR strategy, then they are going to be well tuned in to what is happening locally, and they may be able to either offer themselves as an expert, or the news media may automatically turn to them as an expert because they have built that relationship. And it allows the franchisee to develop and establish their expertise in their territory. The disadvantages of this approach, again, that inconsistency I talked about, when you are leaving your uh, public relations and promotions up to your franchisee, it can be inconsistent because they get busy trying to run the business or do other things. Also, it may not align with brand standards. This is an area where you can really lose control of the message. You can lose control of the brand um, if there isn't any oversight on what franchisees are pushing out from a public relations and digital marketing standpoint. Next we are going to talk about comprehensive strategies. These are strategies that satisfy both needs from a national level as well as a local level, and this can be accomplished in two ways. The first way is a strategy that is completely controlled and paid for by the corporate or home office. And the second strategy is endorsed by corporate office and paid for by the franchisees. Both comprehensive strategies ensure that brand consistency exists and that there is corporate oversight as part of your public relations program. This allows you to develop robust programs that showcase your expertise, and you can include all of the materials that might develop, encompass a, a total PR strategy in this type of uh, approach. You can utilize press releases. Um, you can utilize networking materials that can help them network and reach their referral sources. Infographics obviously are a huge way to break through the clutter. They are often picked up by both print and uh, broadcast media. You can use them on social, and they are a quick way to get your point across. You also can do this by integrating your digital content, so utilizing your social media platforms, whichever ones are relevant to you and are most likely to be read by your target audience, and also a blog. This is a medium that you can control directly, um, that you can really tell your own story through the blog. And we recommend blogging for a lot of our franchise clients because it does allow them to establish their expertise and control their own message. Videos, quick videos are everything these days. You see videos on topics from recipes to the presidential election. So utilizing video and figuring out how to create uh, really quick hit informative videos can be a vital part of an overall comprehensive strategy. And online media center access. We, for our franchise clients, like to give the media a place where they can get everything they need to develop a story. So we will develop media centers for our clients where they can not only find 
the full press release that they can find our clients' logos, they can find photography, they can find supporting materials, and they can reach out to us directly if they need more information. So this is a vital part of having a comprehensive strategy because it gives the media a place to go to get everything they need, and ultimately you end up with a story that you most likely will be happier with because you've provided the journalist with everything they need in order to write the story. The advantage to these types of comprehensive strategies include uh, becoming the go-to source for local reporters. PR is something that is best done on a consistent basis, so is digital. But if you develop a rapport with local reporters or if they start to see your materials because you're sending things out of news value on a consistent basis, when something comes up they're going to be far more inclined to go to you because they're familiar with you. Also, the type of local exposure that Comprehensive Strategies provides allows a direct link to your prospective clients. This comes from both the news media side as well as the digital side. If franchisees are able to tell their own story in a way that is compliant with the corporate office, then and from a PR standpoint and a digital standpoint, they are going to connect on a better level and a more local level with the prospective clients that exist in their own backyards. Also, inbound linking on local news sites helps boost SEO. I talked about this briefly earlier, but if you are able to get a news story and they are able to link back to your website, you are going to see some good traffic and it is really going to give your organic SEO a boost. Disadvantage to this strategy, it can be time and cost intensive for corporate offices. It really requires a marketing team at the corporate level that is able to develop the time take the time to develop a relationship with a PR agency, sit down and strategize concepts for the coming year, and execute with the help of the agency on all levels. It can also be cost intensive, but I'm going to talk about a few ways that that can be overcome. Incorporating digital marketing, this is essential to those integrated strategies we talked about. Um, you, PR can't really exist in a bubble anymore nowadays. So many people, most people get their news online or see some news online, and then it's reinforced by the traditional media or vice versa. You see it on traditional media, and it's supplemented by digital. What digital does is allows you to tell your own story. I mentioned this when I talked about blogs earlier. Blogs are an outlet where you have the ability to showcase your expertise, to talk about your business, to talk about trends that you see in a way that's unfiltered by the news media. Often when you do a media story, you may share 10 great sound bites, but you're only going to get two into that 90 second story. So what a blog does is it allows you to tell the full story and to fully control the message. Emails are similar. Although the difference between email is that it's a push strategy. Blogs are more of a pull. Emails are a push. So you can consistently stay in front of your clients, your prospective clients, and even your past clients by developing an integrated email strategy that supports the programs you're talking about with the news media or the content that you're sharing on your digital channels. So you can stay in front of these clients by working with an agency that can help you determine an appropriate rhythm, an appropriate length, appropriate messaging, so that these emails are more inclined to be read instead of deleted. Website management. People really like working with local companies. They may know you are a franchise, but if you can put a little bit of local flair into things like your digital and your websites, website specifically by even showing pictures of your staff or talking about ways that you are involved in the community, it goes a long way with consumers. It shows that you are a local company with local owners. Locally owned is a big deal right now and it, I think it will continue to be. So that is something that you really have the opportunity to push on your website. Templated videos, the way we've been able to execute this for clients is by working with the corporate office to create a shell for a video that includes brand compliant messaging, images, and then working with the franchisees to develop either a voiceover that is local to it or video content that we can drop in to certain sections of the video that make it more local. 
and customize social content. Uh, there, I'll talk about uh, blanket social strategy shortly. But having customized social content really goes back to that buy local thing. Um, if it's specific to your market, if it's your news, if it's ways that you're involved in the community, it's things that are happening at your office, people are going to get a bit warmer feeling from that versus a strategy where all of your franchise locations are getting the same posts all the time and they're more generic. And that approach that we call a little more generic is what we call auto posting. It's often paid for by the corporate office. Um, there are advantages to it. It gives you a consistent message across the brand. Um, it allows the corporate office to control what's being said on social. And it, al it allows the franchise offices to have a social presence period, and that alone can help boost SEO. Um, disadvantages, it's less personal um, without knowing what's happening on a local level with the franchisees, your audience is really going to miss out and probably tune out to your message. And it results in lower engagement across the board. We have seen much more success when we utilize customized social content for our franchise clients versus taking a blanket auto post approach. Um, both are valuable just because if you aren't on social channels that are relevant to your audience, then you're missing out. But we strongly favor a more customized approach versus an auto post approach. And that customized approach is a little bit different. It's typically paid for by the franchise owners directly because they want a little more out of their social. They don't have time to focus on it themselves. They don't know what to write. So they contract with an agency to help them develop social content specific to their office. Um, this ultimately leads to better engagement, and that's a huge advantage of doing a customized or localized social strategy. The disadvantage is, is that it can be a little more time consuming for the franchise owner or their marketer to work with the agency to develop content ideas, but from our standpoint we make it as seamless as possible, and we try to take as little time as possible. And especially if we're already developing public relations strategies for the brand, then it gives us a lot of content to talk about and to make more local from a social standpoint. So how are these franchise strategies funded? I, I said I'd get back to this, and this is where we're going to talk about the funding. Most franchise offices pay into a marketing fund or a brand fund, and a percentage of that would be allocated towards a public relations strategy. It may be part of the advertising bucket or the overall marketing communications budget. But if public relations isn't part of your brand's marketing fund, it should be. Also, there's a preferred vendor strategy that many franchises use where they provide a list of preferred vendors to their franchise owners, and they suggest that franchise owners contact these vendors for whatever their needs may be, public relations or not. Um, they are able to contract and contact them directly to learn more about how those strategies can help promote their office. When you develop a franchise strategy for digital marketing and public relations, it's essential, whether it's a corporate strategy or a more localized strategy, that you communicate with the network. And these are the things that we have found are most important that the network really needs to be aware of so that they can talk about it effectively. Um, first of all, they need to understand why the network is choosing a particular marketing strategy. It should be something that flows across the board. If corporate is promoting something, they need to give the franchise owners the tools they need in order to promote it on a local level. To that end, the franchise owners definitely need to understand the key dates for this promotion period. So we've seen that communication break down a little bit um, from a corporate office to a franchise office standpoint, and that's really where we can step in and work directly with franchise owners to ensure everyone's on the same page for the start and the end of a particular promotion or program. Also, the Franchise Network needs to understand how they can optimize the chances of success in their local market. It's things like being accessible if an interview opportunity comes up. And by accessible, I mean the news media works very quickly. So it's a possibility that a program might be pushed out in the morning and you may have an interview opportunity in the afternoon. It's also just being engaged in the program and understanding it, working it on the local level, and having access for us to have access to somebody at the local franchise office if that's the approach we're taking so that we can contact them for news media interviews. We can contact them if we need local social content. 
so engagement is key. There are many ways agencies can help corporate offices achieve a successful public relations and digital marketing strategy. First of all, an agency will offer a third-party perspective to your communication strategies. Oftentimes businesses get very close to what they are doing, and it's hard to get that bird's eye view. So an agency can offer a neutral perspective, and specifically an agency with expertise in public relations and digital marketing may be able to see how you can solve certain communications challenges in a different way or by using a medium that you hadn't previously considered. Agencies can also help identify the right story, especially if you're doing a consumer, if you're a consumer brand and you're trying to do consumer PR, you have to really toe the line between news value and promotional. News outlets are not going to pick up on stories that are overly promotional, but agencies can help you find the news angle in what you're doing and develop pitches and press releases that are more newsworthy and more likely to be picked up by the media. When I say newsworthy, it's something that has to appeal to the masses. It has to have a wide appeal. It can't really be designated to a small niche market. So newsworthy stories appeal to the masses, and they have a news hook, whether that's a statistic that we research or a trend or an existing news story that you're hopping onto as the local expert. There has to be a news value hook to the story. Um, you can also the leverage the media expertise of an agency. Most agencies at least have experience in local markets. We have experience, like I said, in all 50 states throughout the country. We have experience with local trade and vertical market and lead generation publications. So depending on your goals, an agency can be vital to helping you break through and break into some of those publications or outlets that are going to be key to your success. And really, last thing is that agencies do the dirty work. Pitching the media is a full-time job, and it's something that has to be done consistently. So you're turning that over to an agency and allowing them to pick up the phone, contact the media, pitch your story, and stay on top of it, and really be a dedicated partner to you when it comes to achieving max maximum exposure for your brand. We have experience with a lot of franchise companies. Um, there are a few here on the screen that you can see, and this isn't all of them, but it's some of the highlights of our franchise expertise that we've cultivated over the past 15 years. I just briefly want to go over the services that Albers Communications Group offers. Um, we believe that everything, whether it's public relations or digital, has to start with a strategic approach to the planning process. So strategic planning is something that we always begin our relationships with. Research, media training, it's essential that you go, don't go into a media interview cold, so we prepare all of our clients for speaking to the media, whether it's conducting a mock interview before uh, you go on with the news media live, or it's a more intensive process where we formally train people. We have vast experience doing both. Media relations and pitching. Uh, crisis planning and management, this is something that I have to quickly talk about because if you don't have a crisis plan for your business from a communi communication standpoint, there, that's something that you really need to consider developing. If something happens with a particular franchise location, um, if something happens at a corporate standpoint, if something happens with a franchisee, what is your communication strategy in the event of a crisis? So consider that because it's something that is vital to all businesses, but especially multi-location businesses because they're so large. Event planning is also one of our services that we offer. Digital marketing, we offer strategic planning. Again, like I said, everything starts with a plan at Albers. So we start by working with our clients to determine their pain points, determine what they're doing well, what they are or are not doing from a strategic standpoint, and go forward by developing a plan. Um, we manage social media platforms for our clients from YouTube to Facebook to Instagram. We can manage all of the channels so that you don't have to. Website development, we can build websites. We can take existing websites and optimize them and make them better. Blogging, which I talked about earlier in the presentation, as well as email marketing. And then online reputation management. It's critical to know what your customers are saying about you in the online space. Um, and just to keep tabs on it so that you can adjust your strategy accordingly. So this is something that we offer to our clients as well. And then video production. We are a full service video production agency. So from pre-production to script development, graphics, 
editing, post-production, it's all handled in-house at Albers. With that, it concludes our presentation today. I'd like to thank you for joining us. If you need more information, if you would like to talk, please contact us. You can find us at alberscommunications.com, on Facebook at Albers Communications Group, on Twitter at Albers CG. And if you need to reach me, you can email me at gina at alberscommunications.com. Thank you so much for your time today, and I hope you have a great day.